Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, brethren, in the Lord Jesus Christ. I welcome you to another devotional from the Anglican devotional of Daily Fountain. Today, April the 5th, Tuesday, 2022, we are considering a very interesting topic, a cry for help. A cry for help. And the text is Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 1, running up to verse 22. This particular passage is about the plight of a nation that God loved, Israel. No nation has been loved by God like Israel. No nation has suffered in the hands of God like Israel. It is a child that a father loves that he chastises. And so the suffering of the people of God today is on account of their failures in their dealings with God. If we did what we ought to have done at the beginning, we won't be where we are. If we remember that the missionaries came and they left their comfortable Europe to come and evangelize us, and we now have the light of Christ, and what did we do about it? When the evangelization started here since 1842, where Heritance started in Badagri, from there he moved to Abeokuta, from there he moved on, Ajay Krada came, he was there in Yoruba land, he went to Nupe land, he went to Igbo land, he went to Niger Delta, one man. Millions today are his converts. No vehicle, no helicopter, nothing. He didn't have enough money. He did so much for God. Many of them died. They have results to show for it. We are lazy today. We're not evangelizing. Those we ought to have evangelized that we didn't are the ones who are now attacking us today. The chicken has come home to roost. We're paying the penalty for our indifference as far as the evangelization is concerned. The prophets were sent by God. Apostles were sent by God. Jesus had no fixed home address. He said foxes have their holes and the birds have their nests. Son of man has nowhere to lay his head. I must preach the gospel to other people. I have other sheep we do not know. That's the pattern. Not building structures and building empires not building name after ourselves, denominations, going nowhere. And so when we find ourselves in this kind of situation, then we are going to suffer the consequences, and that was what Israel did. They took God for granted. Tabernacle, temple, they were all there with them. Synagogues were there with them. Presence of God, the laws of God. But they took God for granted, and God punished them. God sent them into exile under Assyria in 721 B.C., under Babylonian in 586 B.C., from Babylonia, they pass on to the Persians. From the Persians, they pass to the Greek Empire. From the Greek Empire, they pass on to the Roman Empire. That was what was their condition as slaves, perpetually, under successive governments of the people all over the world when Jesus Christ came. And so this background of the cry for help is about the situation of the people. I love God. The nature of God is after punishing people, he, he forgives them and he restores them back. He's a merciful God, extremely merciful. He shows his mercy and loving kindness to generations up to a thousand generations. He's a gracious God. And so this particular passage is picturing that experience of Israelites under the hands of God. And you will draw similarities with the situation of the church and Nigeria by this devotion. Let's read the passage. Jeremiah, chapter 14, verses 1 to 22. And the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah concerning the death. The death here is talking about the bad situation. When God judges, he fights even with natural elements. When Jesus was predicting the end of the world, one of the signs was earthquakes, pestilences, Diseases, famine. So when God stops rain, that's famine. It's been so from the Old Testament times. 
So when there was a death in Israel, there was no rain in Israel, it affected the economy, it affected virtually everything, survival of the people, and when there is a death, the rich may think they can escape for some time, but when it gets so serious, everybody will be affected. So it came concerning the death. There was a famine in the land of Israel. Judah mourns, and the gates thereof were languishing. They are black unto the ground. And the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. And their nobles have sent their little ones to the waters. They came to the pits and found no water. So the rich also cry. They found no water. They returned with their vessels empty. They went to look for water to drink. Who to drink as a rich man? There was no water to drink. They sent people to go and look for water. They came empty-handed. They were ashamed and confounded. And they covered their head with shame. And that is what our leaders in Nigeria are going to do. They are going to cover their head in shame. Because you have so much money, you squandered it. Others built their own nations with the same oil. You squandered your own. And you borrowed money that your children, children, children will not pay. You have enslaved the future. A country where you raise doctors and all of them run away. Nurses run away. Everybody, who's going to build this country? Everybody abandoning this country. It's only those who have no opportunity to run away. Many of them that are still staying, young ones, their hearts are out of this country. They don't love their country anymore because the country is wicked towards them. No jobs, no opportunity. Many of them are doing many jobs. And these are people with great potential. And they are still doing political party. And they are still messing up with evil agenda. Unfulfilled manifestos. Liars all. That is the problem. They are going to suffer. Because what will come upon them, they will not be able to handle. That is what is symbolized here. They will send for water. Their, their vessels will come back empty for them. And they will, not, they will look for where to run. They will not be able to find it. Because the ground is chapped. For there was no rain in the earth. Plowmen were ashamed. They covered their heads. Farmers could not farm. The hind, that is the animal, they were calved in the field. They forsook it because there is no grass. When there is no grass, animals will run away. Because what are they going to eat? Our resources are going to fly away. And the white asses did stand in the high places. They snuffed up the wind like dragons. Their eyes did fail because there was no grass. They couldn't eat. They're just snoring the air. There's nothing to eat, nothing to drink. All of them are in danger. Verse 7 of Jeremiah chapter 14. Oh Lord, this is a prayer now. It's praying to God because of this situation. It's because of sin. Oh Lord, though our iniquities testify against us, do thou eat for thy name's sake. For our backsliders are many, we have sinned against thee. We are backslidden, we have sinned against God. He said this punishment now, for your namesake, please, you have to help us. Because our sins have testified against us. What has not testified against us in Nigeria? Banditry, raping, killing, suicide, murder, political assassination, adultery, abortion, kill, ritual killing. Our sins are testified against us. Stealing, corruption, injustice. People are killing people are roaming the streets with their guns. And those who have been slaughtered are the ones that were now put in jail. People cannot cry for justice again. It's a terrible country. Full of injustice. That's what Jeremiah is calling about here now. And verse 8. Oh, the hope of Israel. Who is the hope of Israel? God. He's calling upon God. You will intervene because of your namesake. You know, it reminds us again of the story of Moses when God was angry with Israel and God said, I'm going to destroy the whole of Israel because of their sin. I will raise a new generation from you, Moses. I'm not in a hurry. I raise you all from Abraham. I can raise another generation. Let me kill them. What did Moses say? Have you considered what the Egyptians will say? For the sake of what they will say, please repent ye of this evil. And God repented. That's the power of intercession. That's what he's saying here. Jeremiah was saying, for the sake of your name, Lord, please, God Almighty, do something. Everybody is going to suffer, including the prophets. You know, when the evil people are suffering, the righteous will suffer there too. Oh, if there's a problem, even the pastor can fall victim. That it is in our collective interest to get things right and to save our nation. He's interceding now. After announcing the judgment, talking about the famine, talking about the, everybody suffering from it, irrespective of their classes. All the hope of Israel, all the hope of Nigeria, the Savior thereof in time of trouble. He said, why should you be as a stranger in the land and as a wayfaring man that turneth aside to tarry for a night? 
A wayfaring man is a man who's traveling on the journey, who stays in the hotel for one night and continues the journey. He said, God, don't be like that. Don't visit us occasionally and go. Stay with us. Don't be a stranger in your land. You know, God can be a stranger in his land. It was said of Jesus Christ. He came unto his own. His own did not accept him. But as many as accept him, he has made them, what? Children of God. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock the door. If you open, I will come in. If you don't open, I pass you by and I will go. Jesus is a gentleman. Holy Spirit cannot be grieved. Gentleman. Holy Spirit is not just spirit. He's a man. Masculine pronoun, him. is used for him. He is a he. That's why we are one. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. You can only grieve somebody. I sin against a human person. He said, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. He's a God personality. So we are being told here, don't be a stranger in the land. You are our God. Look at verse 9. Why should thou be as a man astonished, as a mighty man that cannot save? Yet thou, O Lord, you are in the midst of all, and we are called by your name. Leave us not. Don't leave us alone, O Lord. We are called by your name. We are called Christians. Even though men are not Christians. Because if we are Christians, we will behave like Jesus. We are not behaving like Jesus. Church fighting church. Brothers of the same parent cannot eat food at the same table. You can't even take Holy Communion together at the same table. A Catholic marries a non-Catholic. They will join them in marriage in the Catholic Church. The priest will say, well, God has joined together. Let nobody put us under. But after that, they will give Holy Communion, the Mass. They will give communion to the Catholic lady. They will not give to the man who is an Anglican, who is not a, who is not a member of the church. We, we right at the altar. We separate what God has joined together. We don't see eye to eye. Instead of converting non-believers, we want to take from the Anglican, take from Methodist and Baptist, and we feel our congregation as Pentecostal, and we say our churches are large. You have stolen people. You have not converted anybody. That's what he's saying here. He said, oh, almighty God, you are here among us. Don't be like us, like a person who has a God who cannot save us. You are the Lord. You are in the midst of us. We are called by your name. We are Christians. Leave us not. This is a prayer of Christians who pray today. Leave us not. Leave us not, O Lord. Look at verse 10. Thus says the Lord unto these people. He's going to prophesy now after intercession. Thus have they loved to wander. They have not refrained their feet. Therefore the Lord did not accept them. He will now remember their iniquity and visit their sins. They are the one. This it, is a discourse. The situation is intercession and God is replying now. The same man who was interceding, God is now speaking through him. He said, it's because of their sins. It's because they have not walked in the way of the Lord. That's the reason why I remember their sin. I will not blot it away. Then said the Lord unto me, do not pray for these people or don't pray for their good. May we not get to the level where God said we should not pray for Nigeria again. May we not frustrate to God. Frustrate God to a level where God says, I don't want to hear the prayer of the people any longer. The prayer of a sinner is abomination before the Almighty God. But God is saying, don't pray for these people. Don't pray for their good. Let the calamity, they deserve the calamity. Let it fall upon them. When they fast, I will not hear their cry. When they offer burnt offering and oblation, I will not accept them. But I will consume them by the sword and by the famine. And then I said, ah, Lord God, behold, the prophet say unto them, see, eh, ye shall not see the sword. This is another dimension. God says, I will punish them. I won't hear their prayer. I won't accept their offering. I won't accept their fasting. Then he goes now, he says, ah, ah, God, please, sir. It's not, our, it's not our fault, sir. There are some prophets who are telling them oh, that there can be no problem. There is no sword coming. There, there is no sword coming. There is no sword coming. At the time of Jehoshaphat, they didn't experience that. At the time of the Old Testament kings, didn't we experience that? When lying prophets were telling, to the, telling the king, oh, go to battle, you will win, you will win, you will win. And that king was very, very perceptive. He knows how God works. Is there no other prophet among this, except this majority prophets who are saying this will be okay? They say, ah, excuse me, there is one more prophet. His name is Micah. You, that one does this. He's a prophet of doom. He won't tell you anything that you want to hear. The kings want to hear false prophets. And there are lying tongues, false puppet messages, praising the rich, praising the arm robbers who, who pay tight. We are joining the multitude to do evil, bringing blood money into the house of God, the blood money that was rejected for Judas. They were the ones that gave him the money to go and betray Jesus. When he returned the money, it had committed a crime. They threw it away. They used it to buy a for him. 
The blood money must not be in the temple. We are accepting blood money in the house of God. Cocaine dealers are paying money. Four one nine nine ritual killer Yahweh who are paying money to church. May God deliver us. Then they called for Micah, and they brought this man who was just the only good prophet among the people. And they said, what does the Lord tell you? Should we go to battle? And Micah said, well, you go. They have told you to go. Go, you will succeed. He was talking in parables. He said, how many times have I told you not to hide anything from me? Tell me what the Lord says. And Micah said, I see the army of Israel scattered like sheep without a shepherd. And the king said, I told you he will never say anything good. He said, go and put him in jail until I return. And Micah said, if you return, then God has not called me. That's the courage we are talking about. That's what he's talking about here. Jeremiah was saying here that it is the first prophet. Said, then said I, Lord God, behold, the prophet said unto them, is the prophet that said to them that you shall not see the sword, and then neither shall you have famine, but I will give you a short peace in this place. They were promising peace, promising prosperity. Then the Lord answered him. Then said the Lord unto me, the prophets are prophesying lies in my name. I send them not, neither have I commanded them, neither did I speak unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination. They are using divination of prophecy and a thing of naught and the deceit of their own heart. Therefore, thus says the Lord, concerning the prophets that prophesy in thy name, in my name, and I send them not, yet they say, sword and famine shall not be in the land, by sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed. And the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword. This is judgment of God. May we not be misled by people who are false prophets. This particular passage is a passage of pleading with God that things will be better that we will be redeemed from calamity, we will not be misled. It's a cry for help. Let's go to the Daily Fountain devotional after the Bible exposition. In our text today, we see the calamities of lack of rain, famine, false prophets, and multiplied carnality. In the days of Prophet Jeremiah, God told Jeremiah not to pray for the people of Israel because they were determined to sin. <laughs> they were determined to sin. How do you pray for a man who has made up his mind to sin? Premeditated sin. They made up their mind. Their hearts are hardened and God gave them, gave them up to their reprobate mind. What do you see of Christians, bishops, clergymen who know that homosexuality is a sin. Even dogs, the most promiscuous of animals, don't commit homosexuality. You won't see a lesbian dog or a, or a gay dog. You know what God did to Sodom and Gomorrah. Evidences are there. In Israel today, go to the Dead Sea. The ruins are there. Sodom and Gomorrah ruins are there. An archaeologist went to the, to, to, to the site of Sodom and Gomorrah, the ruins of Sodom and Gomorrah, took a limestone, limestone, and struck a match. It was burning. The sulfur was still there. Thousands of years after now, archaeology tells us the truth. Go to Israel. All these places are there. Sinai is there. Jerusalem is there. Bethlehem is there. The Bible is real. And some people have audacity to say, yes, homosexuality is allowed. President of America, president of England. All of them are proud to say we are no longer a Christian country. We are want to go homosexual. We want freedom for abortion. You are want to kill unborn babies that will be your future leaders tomorrow. You are killing your president, killing your senators, killing your millionaires tomorrow. And you say it is the normal way the devil has taken over society. That is what God is telling us here, brethren. So when people's minds have been set, God will be helpless. He said, don't bother wasting your prayer. Don't forget what he said to the people of Israel in 1 Chronicles. If my people, it starts by if. He didn't say that uh, automatically to, if my people, my own people, genuine born again Christian, if they, who are called by my name, genuine Christian, God doesn't care about the Muslims or care about the other unbelievers or nominal people. He, says, he cares about only the Christians. We are the ones who have the name. We are the ones who have heaven. We are the ones who can control the economy. We can control things. <laughs> We are the ones who can say things can change. We are the ones. When Elisha said that by this time tomorrow the economy will change and the, the nobleman said it is not possible, he said you will see it, you will not be able to eat out of it. We can change the tide. 
We can remove governors. We can remove presidents. We can pray them to die. We can pray them to be out. We can dethrone them. We can remove them. We have awesome power. If my people who are called by my name, if they humble themselves and they repent of their evil ways and they call upon me, I will answer from heaven and I will heal their land. If, but when they do not do it, God is constrained. May we not limit the Holy One of Israel. When we are righteous and we repent, God will hear our land. That's what he said. God told Jeremiah not to pray for the people of Israel because they were determined to sin. And so God had decided to punish them with those calamities. Is God punishing us with these calamities we are facing in this country? I think so. Nevertheless, Jeremiah prayed. Even though God said, you don't pray. What else can we do except to pray? There is no alternative. We seek it. We pray for this country. And prayer meetings are going on, brethren. People are praying. Jeremiah prayed. He confessed the sins of their forefathers. That's what we need to do. Acknowledge their wickedness and their iniquity. That's what the Christians should do. Among other things, Jeremiah pleaded with God, do not abhor us for thy name's sake. Do not disgrace the throne of your glory. Aha. There is a throne of glory in the church. For the sake of God. When you want to plead with God, talk about him. Moses said, uh -uh, the God of the whole universe, you can't do bad thing. What did Egyptia say? Abraham, when he was pleading for Sodom and Gomorrah, he said, oh, we are the God of the universe. What if there are 50? Won't you spare the land? He said, I will. What if there are 40? What if there are 30? 20, 10, until he gave up at 10. God is ready to listen to us if you can hold God on account of his name and his word. He said, for the sake of your glory, O Lord, even though you say I shouldn't pray, please don't look at our own. I represent them. I confess the sins of our father. Father, I confess the sin of those who have been kidnapped, who have been killed, who have been raped, who have, they've done this, they've done ritual killing, they've done assassination, they've done genocide, they've done every, every terrible thing, civil war, killing people. God have mercy. Only the righteous can pray for the unrighteous. That was what he was doing here. He was praying for his sins, confessing the sins of his forefathers and asking God, don't abhor us. Don't make us look abhorrent. For the sake of your name and for the throne of your glory. That's what he prayed for. Verse 21. In conclusion, this devotional is saying, let us, like Jeremiah, plead with God concerning our nation, Nigeria, concerning the church of God, and concerning our families. He will certainly hear us. Can I hear amen? Amen. You are the people of God called by his name. He respects you. You can turn the hand of God. You can force the hand of God. Confess the sins of your family, your community, your state, your nation, and your church. We have left undone what we ought to do as a church, and we are doing what we ought not to do. These are not the times for prosperity theology, Simon. These are the times for righteousness and holiness, salvation of souls, because wide is the road that goes to eternal life, and millions are going there. Are you aware that COVID-19 alone has killed five million people all over the world in just one and a half years? More than the population that died in first and second world war, one disease. How many have cancer killed? How many have heart attack killed? How many have HIV killed? How many have other people are dying? As I speak, people are dying. In rapid succession, records are not being kept in Nigeria. People are dying. Where are they going? Most of them are going to hell. That's the reason why you who are children of God, you must cry out to the Almighty God. If these calamities continue, we are going to be in trouble. In trouble. We need to reorganize ourselves that God will help us to have good leaders to change the situation in this country. As we are speaking now, the whole of the southern part of this country, we are not very, very reasonable. Most of the food that people eat are coming from the north. If they blockade the north, and they blockade the food from coming there, the people are going to starve. They're not farming. We're at risk. Environmental crisis is coming. Problems are coming. Our prayer is, as Jeremiah stood for Israel, let the Christians stand, let the Anglican Christians stand, and let us say, I repeat again, let us, like Jeremiah, plead with God concerning Nigeria, our nation, the church, and our families, he will certainly hear us. And the prayer in this devotional is, let's say it together, say after me, dear Lord, Please have mercy on us. Please have mercy on us. It's by the mercy of the Lord we are not consumed. The Lord will have mercy on us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you that you raised Jeremiah for that time. 
We have raised us also as your children, Christians, O oh Lord, Anglican Church especially, for a time like this. We confess the sins of our country, of our people, our so many tribes, our languages, our families, our churches. Forgive us in Jesus' name. God Almighty, do not look at the sins of our people out of mercy and on the account of your word that if we repent of our sins, you will hear us and heal our land. Please hear us. As Jeremiah prayed, O oh Lord, don't be abhorrent to Nigeria. Don't turn your back against us. Look at us again. When you punish, you restore. Restore us, O oh Lord. Let this time of evil pass. Let the time of refreshing come back to us. When you will reign. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for staying with us. See you again tomorrow for another edition of The Daily Fountain. Be blessed. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen.